of the Queen. Queen Clive the Mestra. In each shrine she lights a taper. To each god she gives a stroke of sacrifice. All the altars are ablaze with your gifts. Lady, our Lord Defender, what news? You will hear the joy in my heart. The night has delivered a new day. Priam's city has fallen and the Greeks have taken Troy. Did you not see the pyres? The night made day by my command. Long in the making, long in the waiting. But now, now comes home our noble lord. See the fires racing along the coast. See the altars blazing the good news. Don't stand about gawking. I am well prepared for this victorious homecoming. Ten years in the making, ten years in the waiting. <clears throat> but be on your way. Prepare, prepare for the arrival of our victorious king. The fire is killed, all is good. But can we believe it? After all these years, the battle's won. Or is this one more jest of heaven? <clears throat> Only a woman would be so foolish to believe rumor without proof. Let me stand still. This holy, solid ground, this earth, no plagues that heave, full of the pit and weave of restless seas, I tread the earth of my own home, and joy is in each weary stride. Is this a herald staggering so? A null of bow so bleached? His beard raiming ocean stains? Wanderer, <laughs> confirm our dash our hopes, but speak! No hopes to dash, but joy to tell! <laughs> Troy has fallen, and we Greeks victorious! <laughs> Turn your eyes to the sunrise, sweeping all dark, fear before it. This bright new day shines from Agamemnon's golden brow. Welcome home your triumphant lord, Agamemnon, has toppled the towers of Troy, sown alien with the bones of his impious sons, and now he returns, the conqueror, to claim your praise and your adoration. I knew the flaming beacons did not lie, though these did doubt my faith. I know what you are and what you have to say. It is sufficient to see you standing there. Tell this to my lord Agamemnon. All the land loves and honours him. His wife loves him as deeply as on the day he left these shores. As true to him as any guardian hound, I guard his door. Faithful only to one master, <coughs> unsullied and intact, his hearth awaits, as does his faithful lady. There is no need to speak so, but surely there is no need to boast. The sense is there for those who care to hear. Unique and wise, the words of our queen. See now he comes, mounted in his chariot, war captors and rich spoils, to swell the wealth and honour of this land. See the captains that he brings. Only these women, black, wrapped in mourning, survive the conqueror's orgy of death. See now they come from their long dark struggle, and chains to live or die at their captor's whim. He returns, he returns, Lord Agamemnon, my Sinai, victorious conqueror. He returns, he returns, Lord Agamemnon, Lord of Argos, conqueror of Troy! Firstly, may Argos, our native gods, receive the thanks of a returning conqueror. Agamemnon, Agamemnon, Agamemnon! As for the destruction of Troy, Heaven shares my glory. Praise to the heavens! We have made Troy pay for her error. The rampant lion on our shields. At dead of night, we sprang from the horse and ground that city's bones, overwhelming its walls and towers with blood, till lust was satisfied. Agamemnon! 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 Now for this deliverance, praise to the heavens. Praise to the us! Citizens, Whatever harms or hurts, injustices or cries for judgment, shall I on the morrow address. I have been gone long time, but now, by the gods, I am returned, and all that is awry will be set right. Welcome, my lord and king. Welcome, noble master. Your home fire awaits, O conquering hero. Citizens of Argos, 
bear witness to this most wonderful homecoming. Alone these ten endless years, I have tended the hearth and altar of your house. Alone, with no man to guide my life. At every turn were I confronted with rumour that fell like searing lead. But I persisted in my faith. Even after I had cried myself to fretful sleep those long, endless nights, I bore within my heart a lamp, unquenchable, lit in faith of your return. Now, dearest husband, step down from your chariot, but do not step upon the earth of your warrior's feet, his mighty stride encompass Troy. Maidens, do as I have ordered you. Hasten, my maidens. Carpet his way with crimson tapestries. Spread this rich cloth before your master's feet. Now, come into your home. A home you must have feared you'd never see again. Sweet justice has returned you, and now all shall be ordered as heaven's wills. Lead his daughter, protector of my house. I hear your words recount my absence, which, like your speech, was over long. <laughs> I am most unkindly you to abase yourself, nor to be flattered with such unfitting pomp, and nor will I walk upon this rich god-coloured cloth. I expect reverence that a man may own, not a god. What is more fitting then to match your deeds? Would not Priam's, if the victory had been his, have walked in his triumph upon such rugs? I am sure he would. And are you not the victor over him? Yet yeah, the people's voice may sense on me. And that voice speaks with great power. Greatness breeds hate. Unenvied is unenviable. It does not suit me to be so forceful. Yet it exudes greatness to accept defeat. Why do you battle me? Oh, yield, my lord. You're the victor. Grant me too this little victory. Oh, very well. Since you are resolved. <laughs> Attend, Miss Liv. Untie my sandals. And let us hope no envious god looks upon this act or I. But you, look kind on this girl and treat her well. She came to me as the army's gift, the jewel of Troy. Slavery is a hard joke, and harder still for those high born. So now, wife, now that you have worn me down, I went to my father's house, trampling royal crimson as I go. Heracles was sold into bondage and had to endure the bitter bread of slavery. From us you will receive what custom dictates. Why will you not answer? Answer the queen! She speaks to you! Obey her! You must learn to obey! I have no time to waste on such as you. It is evident she is mad. <laughs> Your voices mutter in her ears. You will remember that a slave you are and must remain. Strange alien woman, how dare you come here? You have angered the queen. A war captain is no master of the face. She rolls her eyes. She breathes strangely. No 
Come with me. Come with me. I will show you. I am on the scent. A trail of bloody slaughter. It's all this time. See? See there? See there? See them settled and breathing in the bloody stink of the cake and death that never leaves. Drunk with the blood of men, they climb to the house for life. And always their spirit grows, singing their frenzy strain on strain. A revels, a wheelie dance of blood, the furies. The stranger is mad! Aye, mad with a god gift. Apollo, my lord, give me this. He came to me, magnificent in his beauty, and breathed the gift of vision from his lips, searing with love for me. But I yielded, and we sighed together, in a heat of lust. But in my youthful foolishness, I withdrew from him at the very moment of his passion. I recoiled. I deceived Apollo, so then the gods spat full in my mouth, and all my visions were tainted. I see all, I feel all, but none believe me. Never thought to God, the punishment is never ending. I see them waiting in the silence, the scourges of heaven, the curse comes home to rest, or oh, damned line of Agamemnon. She's a lioness, keen for the slaughter. And they, the raptors, wait to sip on the trails of the king. Ah! Ah! We cannot bear to hear more. We leave this place before madness takes our minds. Oh, believe you must. Believe me if you will, it matters not. What will be, will be. You'll see it soon enough. And perhaps in your pity, say the mad Cassandra spoke the truth. Still, Still lost, her riddles leave us baffled. See? See there? See there? What is this new sight? A net? A hunting net? But not for fish no more, fit for a bull to snag with the horns and pull him down, down into the shining path, steaming hot life's blood. But see, in the shadows lurks another. The trap is sprung, and they like shroud around him wraps, and she holds him there. Treachery, treachery, my lord will know I listen. She strikes, he crashes down. Now, now he pays for a fish and I his blood. Until the priest laid sent to the slaughter. I must go into the palace now. The axe steaming with king's blood waits for one more sacrifice to appease its wielder. Yet, one more more. In the light of this sun, I pray that when the avenger comes, thought be spared, for her be killed in chains, their unresisting prey. Alas for humankind, man's happiest hours are but pictures drawn in shadows. Ill fortunes come, but with two strokes of a wet sponge, the drawings wipes away, and grief itself 
is hardly more pitiable than joy. I plan this deed, and if I die, I die. The slate is clean. Nothing is clean like the measure. The slate is second of your blood. You have any blood gout to blood gout. I tell it on your head. You speak as to some witless woman. You are wrong. This is my husband, Agamemnon, now stone dead. His death, the work of my right hand. There lies the simple truth. Vile women! What a matter of faith has found you that you do not shrink from the godless guilt! Award me your contempt, your roars of civic hate. It touches me not. Why did you, O righteous now, not condemn this man for his past deeds? Why did you not dare oppose this man, who with his little thought, as men butcher sheep, must sacrifice his child and my own darling? whom my own pain brought forth. He killed her for a spell to bring a wind. He was the one you should have driven from Argos. He was the one who marked with his daughter's blood, ripe for punishment. But my act shocks your eyes and stirs your judicial wrath. I swore on that day to justice in the avenging fury, guardian of my child to aid me, bring retribution for the crime, the cunning I used to kill him. He was the first to use, when on my virgin daughter his savage sword descended. My tears like rivers ran. So if now, with savage sword thrust, his days are ended, then he has paid fully for the wrong his guile began. I have poured this killer's blood to avenge my daughter's shade. Revenge beats revenge, and it is a law of Zeus, a life for a life, and it is a disease that's vengeance, and takes all the members of this house. This is a happy day, and I rejoice in it. Here, the king lies entangled in a net of his own weaving. Here, he is paid in blood for the treachery of his father. This story is old, and you know it well, but let me tell it to you as a testament to my joy. This man's father, Atreus, had a brother, Thyestes, my father. Each vied for the crown of this city, but my father lost the contest and was driven from his hearth. Time passed, and in hardship, Thyestes pleaded as a supplicant, a poor vagabond for shelter to Atreus, happy simply to live in peace with his brother happy to return to his old home. Atreus took him in and ordered a great feast to mark the day. But in his heart was hatred still, for Atreus took my two brothers, the eldest sons of Phaestes, cut their throats and bled them, slaughtered them, finally butchered the parts and stewed the meat, reserving the limbs and heads. He had this steaming savoury presented to my starving father, he gorged himself, eating with enthusiasm to honour his host. Then, a second platter was brought, and on this laid the dismembered parts, my father reeled in horror, vomited on the floor his own children. He smashed the dishes and roared a curse on Atreus and all his line. 
just as my name shatters the earth, and all your land be broken, spelt, and speared out. <laughs> so, all has come full circle. I, the far brawler, have brought justice, and Atreus's line is ended here. I am content. You're fearless with us now, yet you are in head, lurking in the shadows of the house, sporting with the wind, poisoning our hearts, where he lives long and life is a warrior for us. You can go and get us women. You can bear the death of our line, and at last you place his sword. And the woman's hard to do the work, because you ain't got it there. What? You don't show teeth. Will you not stand and fight, you coward fool? Show me your sword. I'll teach you curls not snarl at your own master. Guards! Guards! Enough! There has been enough blood this day. Good people go home. Destiny cannot be avoided. <coughs> I accept it. So should you. My words are wise. Accept them. What? Let them get away with insult? No. You heard their insults! No! My heart was dead to dead to dawn! But they will bend their backs to one who will whip them like dogs. You don't heed cockerel, even your head is ashamed of you. Dogs bark loudest that cannot bite. My dear, their words mean nothing. It is you and I who rule this land. All the lives of Argos hang from our fingers. And we together shall exact due reverence for our throne. Vengeance enacted. Let us now have peace. <laughs>